Ever wanted to learn how to add some 3D elements to your projects? I got you covered. On each video, I'll show you the least amount of information you will need to complete a bunch of small 3D projects. Welcome to D Plus Tutorials, the stupid simple way to add another dimension to your work. Let's get started. Today, we will learn how to get from Figma to Cinema 4D, some basics some how to use it, let's extrude some shapes, add a camera and make a 2 keyframe animation that looks a lot harder. For our first project, I find some really nice illustrations from this guy, Gustavo Henrique, from Brazil. <laughs> nice people. He has some really simple modeling and nice renders. He used Octane for this, but we don't need it. I found this pretty simple and funny and UI. <laughs> Let's try to do this. Since I'm really bad at Figma, I saved you some time and I didn't show you how long it took me to came from the illustration from these simple vector shapes. <laughs> okay, but I think you can do a lot better and a lot faster. I got down the simple shapes and I'll export it as an SVG. But Cinema 4D doesn't accept SVG files, so we have to go through a Illustrator to convert it to AI. But before that, just don't let the shapes be as a stroke. Otherwise, Cinema 4G will try to put an inward and outward stroke and it will make things a lot harder. So, we just invert it and make the full shapes. And save this as an Illustrator file. And believe it or not, Illustrator 8, that's the one Cinema 4D likes the most. In After Effects, you can start a new project, use the template, 10 seconds, ok. And here, you left mouse click, new Maxon Cinema 4D file, you have to save this, browser, totally written wrong and it will open Cinema 4D. Inside Cinema 4D, we can go to File, Merge, yeah, this is a weird way to import things, but okay. We can open the AI file. Okay, here is the basics of Cinema 4D. Navigation is the most important thing. You need to move the camera around all the time to see what you're doing, so you can navigate by clicking this, and panning around using this to zoom in the middle of the screen you just need to click and hold and drag your mouse click this to rotate around the center of the screen or the center of the object that is selected another way to move around is with the numbers 1, 2 and 3 of the keyboard if you keep the 1 pressed then you have the same function of this if you keep the number 2 pressed, you have the same function as the zoom, but this time it will zoom whatever you're clicking. And if you keep the number 3 pressed, you can rotate around wherever you're clicking. Okay. But if you have a 3 button mouse or a Wacom tablet, you can go to your preference, Wacom pen and set up middle, right and left click. Doing this, you only need the option key on your keyboard. So if you keep the option pressed, your left click will rotate, your middle click will zoom and your right click will pan. Something like that. I probably have one of those wrong. Here is a list of the objects on the scene. So we have imported these paths and they are here inside this folder and here is the attribute of wherever you're clicking since all the shapes are on the same path I'll need to go to spline segments explode segments so we can have one path for each object we can get this out of this this is nothing we can delete 
Okay, as you can see, I'm really bad at naming, so you do a better job than me. No, when you go back to our reference, they have some thickness. And we can do that by extruding this spline. There's a bunch of buttons here, but what we need is exactly this. You can see on the icon that we have some shape and it's going backward. We can get everything inside there. Okay. Cinema 4D works like this. You put things inside other things. <laughs> That's the main mechanic of Cinema 4D. So, but when you get things inside an extrude, it will just extrude the first one. But there is an option. When you click the extrude on the attributes, there is a hierarchical. And this will extrude everything inside. Let's get a really smaller one. Yeah, maybe even smaller. Okay. Now everything is on the same plane. So we can start clicking on this plane and moving it back. Browser. Okay, we are almost on the same plane. Okay, just double check. Let's double check. Okay, these are on the same space. But you can see, this is the preview render. If you click it, it looks a lot CG because it's too sharp. So we need to add some bevel. You can click on extrude. It, it could be an object. Go to caps. Caps is the is the part of the model that is closing everything. If it had no caps, it would be just the thickness. So we have caps, and now we need some bevel. Too much. We need just a hint. It's a really, really small. Okay, here we have our model. Ta -da! But if we try to shade this, we can only add the color to this object. So we will end up needing to have an, one extrude for each one of these. So the fast way to do this is pressing the letter C or on this button. Okay, make editable. It will just make everything on its own extrude object. So this is exactly what we want. This is the axis of this object and it's way off. The axis is here and the object is there. So we will need to center all those axes to make it easy to animate. Go here, mesh, axis, Access center. You can choose include children, include all objects, select your objects, and the cube. Make sure it worked. Okay, both front and back. Yeah, maybe I need to go one by one. The set review wasn't going to be really exciting. The straightforward way to animate this is to select them. Okay, here we want, okay, on the attributes, we can keep frame by clicking on this dot, okay, we can go back, I can make this zero, and add a keyframe, and when you play, it's animated. Okay, but this is really boring, and it's a lot of keyframe, if you open timeline, dope shit, yeah, it's a weird name. You can see all the keyframes and maybe you can start playing them around to make them not happen at the same time. Yeah, it's a lot of work. We don't want to do this, right? Oh, another important one for navigation is the fourth button. <laughs> Explain the first three one. The fourth one you go and you see all your orthogonal views. You have another a quick hint. Here is the selection. If you have something selected and you press O, it will fit the screen in whatever your mouse is over. And let's delete all these keyframes. What 
what you're going to do is use the fracture object as a way to use the factors. Yeah, we don't use to fracture. Fracture is it's used to broke a polygon and animate its individual polygons, but we are just going to use this as a way to access the effectors. So we can manage this on a much simpler way. We can go on homograph, we just have the fracture here, and from effectors we just have the plane and the random. We use the plane. The plane effector is like full one. That's called plane. It's all in. So if I make them go up, everything goes up. If I scale them, everything scales. Make them go down. Make them scale. And minus one is zero. <laughs> Don't know why, it's weird. Okay, how we control this? The easiest way is to go to the strength and just animate from zero strength to 100 strength. Okay, it looks a lot like Photoshop. Here's the strength. It's like when you're in Photoshop and you are trying to mix this layer, you go to opacity. You just... everything goes at once, okay? What we want to do here is get the strength back to 100. We are going to use falloff. Falloffs are just like adding a mask, okay? We can add all kinds of masks in Photoshop and we can do the same thing in Cinema 4D. Linear mask works just like a gradient. Click on the file, linear field, field is the gradient in this case. Okay, this is way to be. You can just click and drag to make it go on. But since most of them are almost on the same plane, I'll try to add some curvature to, to this so it goes from the bottom left part to the upper right. Go to the linear field coordinates. Add some keyframes to the position, preferably on the first keyframe. Okay. You can go and then another keyframe there. And on the timeline, I just dock it here, but you can go on Windows Timeline. Dock sheet. We have it here, just select. You can expand, make whatever you want. A nice way to make everything clean here is to add some red dots <laughs> so you don't see this on the viewport. We have two dots for each one. The top one is on the viewport, the bottom one is on the render. Like, if I add a red dot on the top part of the fracture object, it's not visible on the viewport, but if you render, it renders. Okay, here is our super duper animation with just one, two keyframes. Here we can see the speed of animation. If we open out one of the attributes, so we can make it linear or we can add some curves. Here we can change the size of the curves or we can break the tangent and make one of the curves bigger than the other one. So it starts faster and then slows. We can go back to the falloff and maybe add mm -hmm, a random field. But just as an overlay and just a tiny bit. So to mess around with the linear. <coughs> it will be just like adding some noise to your gradient in Photoshop. We can also go to our remap the frames from one to the other go linear. We can try to add 
some curves here, it's not showing up that linear, it has some easy, see it's really fast and then it's loss. I think we have our animation down, we have our model down, it has some bevel. This camera looks too wide, this looks a lot flatter, so we can find an angle, click on the camera button, it will add the camera on the exact same view of what you're looking but we have to click on this to activate the camera. We can change the focal length here, maybe find a flatter one to look more like the reference. Oh, just forgetting, you need to save this project, otherwise if you go back to your After Effects, it won't be there. Oh, we save your project. This one, browser, okay, I think I got right this time, okay, see you on the next video, thanks.